Hey, thanks, Callie, for sharing. That's awesome. We appreciate you. Um, thanks for being vulnerable. We're talking about belonging, but before we do, I just want to talk about what the video editor left out on the Blazing Hot Wing Challenge. The last one was 70. That's a zero, seven zero times hotter than a jalapeno. And so I just feel like I didn't get a lot of sympathy from this crowd. And I, and I, just, <laughs> I will say that they did a good job editing because I think they edited out seven minutes of me almost passing out. <laughs> there was a point where I couldn't talk because the breath like hurt. It was like fanning this like wildfire in my mouth. So Jesus is the God of miracles and he resurrected my mouth. And that's a weird sentence. Maybe I won't say that again. But anyways, it was a fun. We have a talkie bar afterwards tonight. But we are continuing the series that we've been going through. Whether you've been here, made it to most of our talks, or you're new here, welcome if you're new. Welcome to CAM. We're a college-age ministry of Black Hawk Church. And we are in a series called Becoming New. And this is uh, what we're calling like a transformation series because we believe that God is in the business of transformation. We believe that he is in the business of seeing where we're at and saying, hey, I want to mold you and I want to make you become new. So this is a great series and we're talking about belonging today. And uh, before I kind of just jump into what scripture has to say, I want to share just a story because when I thought about belonging, I thought about this story. So a lot of us were, well, probably all of us are college age, around 18 to 25. A lot of us in school, undergrad, maybe grad school, maybe uh, you're working, internship, gap year, somewhere in between. And I remember uh, when I was younger just thinking, someday I'm going to get a real person job, like an adult job, right? You're writing all these essays, you're doing all these exams, so that one day you can have this job that you can use all the skills that you learn, you can use your diplomas, and you're just there, right? I went to undergrad, then I went to grad school, and finally I got a job my adult job. I'm calling it my adult job. You probably have jobs right now. You're like, I'm an adult too. Great. I'm talking about my adult job. And so I went to grad school in Southern California. I'm from the West Coast. And then I got a job in the Silicon Valley, uh, Northern California. And I remember just being super excited. I was working at a church with student ministries. And my first thought was, okay, I need to find community. Because community is extremely important. I need to find people where I know that I belong, right? That's really important to me. I want, I want my people. Well, I soon found out that a couple of my, they're kind of my friends, you know, acquaintances. Um, they also got similar jobs at the same church that I did. So I was super pumped. I'm like, are you kidding me? That's like instant community. I was excited. I talked to them and we're like, okay, we got to figure something out. I became roommates uh, with, with this guy that I went to grad school with. And um, there's two girls. They got the apartment right above us, which meant we shared Wi-Fi. It was awesome. We're cutting expenses. But it was awesome. Like we would have dinners every once in a while. We would play games together. We would just hang out. I, I found this sense of belonging in this brand new place that I was a part of. It was great. I had other friends, you know, I was branching out, making different, you know, circles, but this was like the OG circle for me, right? These are the people that knew me before these new people knew me, and it was awesome. For about like six, seven months, we would hang out every once in a while, and then summer was around the corner, kind of around right now, and we're just thinking, okay, what different vacations can we do? Like, do we vacation together? And we were dreaming, where could we go? Someone said Hawaii, and I'm like, I have never been to Hawaii. I want to go to Hawaii. I was super pumped. Well, fast forward a week, I come to, to my apartment in my living room, and they were all there. And I was like, oh, I didn't know we were hanging out. And soon I found out that they were planning their trip to Hawaii. <laughs> and I wasn't a part of it. And I was bummed. <laughs> like, I don't know if something like that's happened to you. I wasn't like devastated because, I mean, I was branching out. I had different friends, different social circles. But at that moment, I experienced the absence of belonging. It surprised me. I know that I probably caused other people to experience that, whether indirectly or directly. We're humans. We do that. It's okay. I'm not trying to say they're bad people. We're, we're still friends. But in that moment, I came into touch with what I think all of us in this room, Callie, you mentioned it, 
we experience this lack of belonging. We know what that's like. Belonging is extremely important. We all have this deep desire to belong. We long to belong. Now, when I say the word belong, or when Callie talked about belonging with Hema, I'm sure that right now that word is triggering different things, because it does. Some of you, it might be triggering like, oh, I actually belong. Like, I have my people, I have my group, like, I love it, we study together, we hang out, it's awesome, I got my few people. I'm actually doing pretty good when it comes to belonging. Other people, you might be thinking, I'm getting there. Like, I'm coming here to CAM. This is one of the places where I'm trying to find people to belong. Or, you know, it's a struggle. I'm putting in the work. And, and slowly, I feel like I'm finding people where I belong. Some people, you might be super new to the area. You're, like, coming here or, or, or finding different friends. And you're at the beginning again. You're trying to find this sense of belonging. Some of you right now, you might be thinking, well, I'm not really kind of navigating this social idea of belonging, but if I'm honest, I mean, this is a ministry where we're talking about Jesus. If I'm honest, I don't know if I belong to God. Like, I'm still trying to figure that out. Maybe some of you, you grew up kind of going to church or going to different groups, and then you haven't for a while, and you're just trying to see, okay, what is this God thing about? If that's you, we're so glad that you're here. Welcome. You belong. You belong. Others of you, you know, you might be thinking like, man, Michael, you're saying this about belonging and about God. If you knew the things that I've done, the things that I see, that I look at, the things that I think, how would God ever say that I belong? Which he does. We can talk about that later. Some of you, you're like, I don't even know about this God thing, but I'm here. I want to learn. We wrestle with belonging, whether it's social or about God, we long to belong as people. It's wired deep within us. What do I mean by belong? Here, this is just a quick definition, so we're all on the same page. Belong, it's to be a part of something, a group or an organization. And the reality is belonging, I mean, it's a pretty big thing to be a human, to belong. I mean, think about it. The film industry alone it capitalizes off of this sense of belonging. I mean, love, right, between, between two people. They, they long to belong with each other and, or just in like a social group or friendships. Billions and billions of dollars in the film industry are made from this subject, this idea of belonging. I mean, what's your favorite show? <laughs> there's, I'm not saying that you say it out loud, but <laughs> there's, there's probably this foundation of relationships, whether it's a romantic relationship or it's this friend, this community. Music, your favorite song or your favorite genre, it's probably built off of this foundation of belonging. We have wired in us a longing to belong. And there's a reason for it. There's this passage that we've been going through. None of the teachers, we haven't been really talking about what passages to use. It's this passage. We've been talking about it a lot. And I think it's intentional because uh, like God is intending us to talk about it because it's so important for us. This is why we uh, have this desire to belong. Genesis 1.27 says, So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. This is important when it comes to belonging because God, he is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The very nature of God is community. (laughs) It's community. God is community. And community made us out of his image. We were created from community for community. We were created from belonging for belonging. It's wired deep within us, and that's why it's one of the things that matters the most about us. We long to belong. So what happens when we don't experience belonging? Kind of like my story. What's the opposite of belonging? We've probably all experienced it in different ways, some perhaps more severe than others. It's loneliness. 
there's two um, medical research groups, uh, Cigna and an Oxford Health. Here's a lot of just statistics that, that I want to quickly walk through. This is, this is from a few years ago. They talk about loneliness. So Cigna said that 58% of all Americans are currently experiencing loneliness. 58%. 58%, that's more than half. We are the most socially connected people in the history of the world, yet we are statistically the loneliest people in the history of the world. Wow. We long to belong. Oxford, loneliness is associated with a risk of early death. Wow, that's equivalent to smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Loneliness is more lethal than obesity. People connected to community were associated with a 50% reduced rate of early death. Wow. That's why at CAM we're considering a slogan for our community groups, join a community group or die. I'm just joking, we're not doing that, we're not. <laughs> that, it'd be kind of catchy, we're not doing that. But, but there's a reason why, like one of the most torturous punishments is solitary confinement, right? Who's seen the movie uh, uh, Cast Away a long time ago? I'm a child of the 90s. I'm the guy that two days into being cast away on an island, I've made so many friends, so many. That's me. I need community. We long to belong. It's written in uh, all of us. We, we long for that. We want to be fully known. We want to be fully known. We don't want to be alone. And that loneliness, that, that um, sense of true belonging, I want to start by talking about how that foundation starts with God. Because God is the only one who can fully love us to the full extent that we need. Here's a verse that talks about it, a passage, two verses. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Now, this is important. This is the gospel. The reality is, was while we were still sinners, so in Genesis, after God created humanity in his image, we decided to rebel against belonging, rebel against belonging to God. So God, the whole Old Testament can kind of be summed up as God creating a way for God to come back into humanity in the form of his son, Jesus, to die for the payment of our rebellion so that we can belong to him. God uh, wants us to know that we belong to him. That's the gospel. You belong to Jesus. And that's an important foundation to talk about because if we're talking about belonging, we need to get that right. We need to know that we're fully loved by God. You're fully loved by God. Because when we understand that we're fully loved by God, we can then begin to understand that we are worth love. But that's so hard in this world, right? <laughs> because the world, culture, has a different value system than God does, to be honest. I mean, I don't know about you, But culture will assign value, kind of this pecking order, to see how well we measure up. There's a reality that you can look in the mirror and you can see what culture says you should see. And you might not value yourself like God values you. You might see other people and think, well, they're more attractive than me. They're more gifted than me. They're smarter than me. They're more accomplished than me. But there's an invitation to not value ourselves from the world's standards, but from God's standards. And that's important to get that right. This is what the Bible has to say about that. It's a passage, 1 Corinthians, that says, Brothers and sisters, think about what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. 
God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus who has become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts boast in the Lord. If we want to experience like true, true belonging, true belonging, it starts with a foundation of knowing your worth from Jesus. That's where you start. That's where you start. To know that you are complete in him, for him, and by him. That's where we start. Because then we will get a deep sense of our worth. If we go from anyone else, what happens is we start to measure our worth by a standard that is not God's standard. And that will always, always leave us let down. It'll always make us feel like we're not enough. I remember um, when I was younger, uh, my family, we moved to a different city and this was kind of the first time that I had to recreate community. It was the first time that I moved from one location that I was born and raised and had a lot of friends and I was in this, this kind of new, uh, new location, new city, and I was a little nervous. Um, I was kind of an awkward, weird kid. What up, weirdos? You know, I get it. Um, <clears throat> and, and it was kind of hard to find community, right? It's like going on a bunch of first dates with people, you know, you're like, this is like kind of exhausting. I'm asking these people to hang out and, and oh, you don't want to hang out. That's great. And it was really difficult to find like a, a, a group that would accept me until I found this one group that started to really accept me. And at first I was like, okay, wow, we, fi we have finally found it. I would hang out with them a couple times. And then I got to find out the type of people that they wanted to become. And they were the type of people that, for fun, they would, they would kind of like vandalize things. <laughs> I was like, what are you guys doing? This is like not okay. But, but I would tag along. They started to steal things from stores. And I'm like, what are you guys doing? Like, I don't know about this, but I, want, I long to belong. So I started tagging along. And then they started doing other things that, that was not okay. And I got to a point where I, where I had to ask myself, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Is it worth continuing to find this sense of belonging from this group of people? There's a saying that I like to say, I didn't make it up, but it's show me your friends and I'll show you who you're becoming. Show me your friends and I'll show you who you're becoming. You see, belonging is closely associated with becoming because we become the people that we experience belonging with. I wanna say that again. Belonging is closely associated with becoming because we become the people that we experience belonging with. That's powerful. Who do you wanna become? We're in this series, Becoming New. Who do you want to become? Well, who do you experience the greatest sense of belonging with? Here's the truth. When you choose to connect with anyone, <laughs> when you choose to say, I want to hang out with you, I want to be close to you, you're inviting them to influence your character your very character, you're giving people. We don't know this. Maybe you do, but a lot of times we don't. When we decide to connect with a different person, connect with a different group, when we let them into our lives, we're giving them power to help form who we are, and that's powerful. We gotta be careful. Listen, I've been a college pastor, a young adult pastor for almost 10 years now, which is kind of crazy. Um, getting old, that's fine. You know you're getting old. I was talking to Grace earlier. She's like, I'm, I feel like I'm so old. That's my Grace voice. Um, <laughs> and I said, Grace, you're not old. 
until you wake up from sleeping and your back hurts because you were sleeping. <laughs> That's when you know you're getting old, when you have back pain just from sleeping. It's awesome. Get ready, everyone. But I've been a college pastor, young adult pastor for a while, and I see the same thing over and over and over again. Whenever I see different people move to a different city, a different location, whether you're going to school, internship, work, trying to find work, everyone, since we're so wired to belong, we will long to belong because we're created from this communal God to be communal, I see people come and have a decision to make. They can do the hard thing, which is to try to commit to keep showing up, to try to find a group that's healthy, to find a group that they want to be formed more into because there's power when we're with someone, or I see the other alternative, and the other one is actually, actually what I witness all the time. It's people going the easy route, finding easy belonging. And easy belonging happens in a lot of different ways. The, the idea, though, is it's easy. I see people going to bars a lot. Now, I'm not making a commentary on is it okay to drink when you're a Christian or not. If you have questions, let's talk afterwards. But I see people going for easy community, and then that, that spirals into just getting plastered all the time. I see a lot of people coming on Sundays who have fakes. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, let's talk about that. All right. Yeah, fakes. Why? Who do you want to become? What life are you trying to live? I see people wanting so desperately to belong that they're willing to find it in any way possible. You become who you belong to. Who do you want to become? This is what Brene Brown says about this. She says, any belonging that asks us to betray ourselves is not true belonging. Any belonging that asks you to betray yourself is not true belonging. You are created in the image of God. You know that? You're created for good things. Don't betray yourself. Don't. Don't. Now, what do we do with this? <laughs> we talked about how God created us in his image. We long to belong. How it's good to be intentional, and sometimes it's hard to find a different group of people that, that, that is following Jesus and modeling Jesus' love. But what do we do with that? How do we actually find good community? Well, there's three things that I want to talk about really quick, and then we're going to go on with tonight. Uh, worship song and then talkie Tuesday. I'm excited. The first is commit. Okay, let's talk about this word commit, Okay. This word commit is not a popular word nowadays, huh, is it? And I want to talk about this word commit because when people see this word commit, they're like, yeah, it's totally cool, it's wise, but then you throw up a little bit in your mouth because you're like, I don't actually want to commit. This is what commit means. Commit means going somewhere and saying that I want to commit to these people knowing that there might be a group of people out there that's just a little bit better that's just a little bit more fun, that's just a little bit more exciting, that's just a little bit more attractive. You see, we don't like to commit because social media. You're scrolling, you're like, oh, that's beautiful, but hey, if you scroll a little bit more, you'll find something a little bit more beautiful. If you scroll a little bit more with being trained, oh, I want this thing, Amazon. No, I'm an Amazon guy, but it's so easy. We want the better and the better and the better and the better and the better. So this word commit becomes almost like a, like a swear word to us. We avoid this word commit, but this word commit is really, really, really important for us. Commit is making the decision to stop saying what if and start seeing what is. To stop saying what if and to start saying what is. Who's around me? Oh, they love Jesus. I'm looking for community. They're healthy. They're kind. Scroll. Is there one bet? No, stop. <laughs> stop. What does it look like to commit, to belong, to start, stop seeing what if and start seeing what is right now? The second thing is to trust a few. Okay, I was not a fan of COVID like everyone else in this room, <laughs> but here's what I learned. <laughs> 
before COVID, I was the kind of guy that like I had this big wide social circle, right? I was the kind of guy that I feel like I could pack a room, like, hey, let's have a party, everyone's coming. I had a lot of like, like this, this wide stretch of social friends, but then when I could no longer hang out with my friends, I found out that I didn't really have anything deep. I had wide, but when I could no longer go to the wide, I found out that I didn't have deep. So then God started working on me. I mean, I had no other choice because literally I was at home all day. <laughs> but what does it look like to trust a few? To find a few people and keep asking them to coffee, keep asking them to hang out, keep asking them to, to, to talk to you about the different things and to grow deep because it's when we grow deep that we can experience a deep sense of belonging. To trust a few. And the third is this to extend belonging to others. You see, God created us with this longing to belong. And when we get our acceptance and love from him and choose to surround ourselves with people who, who love like him, the natural thing is that we're going to want to love other people. Here's the passage that we read near the beginning. There's this first part. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for us. Since we read that earlier, this is the second part. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. What if we became a community even more that knowing that Jesus loves us, we extend that longing to belong to other people where they know, hey, you don't have to believe to belong. Hey, there's love here. Jesus loves you. To extend that to others. Like what could happen? What could happen in your life? Because that's how you were created. And I'll end by saying this. God created you out of his image to experience community. He loves you. And the other part of it is he's created you to extend that to others. What would it look like to pursue people, to create a safe place where other people can belong to? Let's pray. Jesus, the topic of belonging is such a sensitive one. I know that there are people here right now, like I said near the beginning, that are all over the map when it comes to belonging. Maybe they've been burned. Maybe there's a relationship that they're not in anymore and they wish they were. Maybe they're not in a relationship and that's the problem. There's a struggling there, God. Maybe there's people here who just really want to know who you are and that they belong to you, that, that there is a God who created them that has a purpose for them, that it's not just a mistake, that there's meaning to their life. God, you are an intentional God and you are a God of love. And I pray that you show us that we belong to you. I pray that you speak to the different areas of, of struggle, of thinking that we're not enough. Let us know that we belong to you, Jesus. And no matter what we can come across, you will pursue us. No matter the shadows, the valleys, you'll be with us. Help us with that, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen.